Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 is going to take us to around the 7th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. It says GFS and ECM ensembles going around in a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. It gets us well into the second half of March. I'll get off that for you in a moment. Just say the first video to say was our 6 a.m. upload. Um, so check out that video if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the vids. And thank you so much everyone uh, for doing that for Gaz. Uh, right, going to start off with the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart from uh, NOAA, just saying that the AO is perhaps on the move over the next couple of weeks. So, black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation, red lines over the air with GFS ensembles, the forecast of the Arctic Oscillation to go. So, we're in very positive territory with the AO at the moment, as we have been really since around the second week of January, to be honest. We've been through a very prolonged period of positivity of the AO, and that tells we had a lot of low pressure over the Arctic and over the North Pole. Polar vortex, you know, have been driving the west. And that's the reason we've had, or one of the reasons, had a relatively mild winter. Um, you can see from the red lines, though, which have a GFS ensemble, it looks like the Arctic Oscillation is on the move, and we'll be at least reducing towards a more neutral type state as we go through the first uh, couple of weeks of March. Maybe even going a little bit negative. We might start to see a little bit of negativity for AO creeping in through the first uh, week or two of March. If, we, if that happens, that is telling us that like the blocking seal could be starting to uh, come back over the Arctic and the North Pole. So when the AO goes negative, it tells us we've got high pressure blocking over the uh, North Pole. So we might be starting to see just one, two hints there of higher pressure returning to Northern latitudes and possibly, um, you know, possibly some uh, Northern blocking beginning to start getting going. The LEO is very similar, so again, the uh, black line shows where we've been with the LEO, red lines at the end, where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the LEO to go. Uh, most of the winter, dates on the bottom of the chart in monthly periods, of course, but uh, most of the winter, the LEO has been in a positive state. Uh, it's still positive there, um, and GFS ensembles forecasting the LEO to stay positive over the next couple of weeks. Well, albeit we might start to see a slight reduction in the level of the NEO as we get into the second week of March. But it doesn't look like the NEO is moving as much as the AO. It looks like it's the AO that could be on the move as we go through March, possibly heading to a more negative type uh, uh, situation, whereas the NEO looks like it's generally set positive through the first half of March. But of course, we'll wait and see uh, about that. These are just forecasts from the GFS ensembles. Um, but we might be starting to see a few indications of the norm blocking beginning, uh, signal beginning to come back. In terms of temperatures at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole, we still have these blue colours, which are the cold temperatures that we've had all winter over the North Pole. There is a warming of the strategy going on at 10 HPA from the Atlantic into northern parts of Europe. However, and that's pushing up in towards Russia and uh, Siberia as well. However, those blue colours continue uh, to sit over the pole as we go through the next week or so before they start to get displaced out in towards northern parts of Europe. These yellow and green colours start to penetrate from uh, the Siberian and Pacific side of the pole in towards the North Pole uh, itself and, and towards Greenland. So uh, eventually we start to see those blue colours beginning to reduce. Although this particular GFS run, this latest six F run, does not produce a sudden stratospheric warming. There have been a few hints in the extended GFS time frame that we might get a sudden stratospheric warming in the second week of March. This particular GFS run does not produce that. So it's not guaranteed, but we do get a sudden stratospheric warming. However, we are going to get a major warming of the stratosphere at 10 HPA that will displace these blue colours, uh, which cold temperature at 10 HPA, that's the polar vortex at its roots. So the polar vortex is going to be displaced place um and uh we are going to get a weakening therefore of zone wings and a weakening of better vortex as we go into uh march how far we take that whether it all develops into sudden stratospheric warming you know that will remain to be revealed but a definite weakening of zone wings i think is on the way uh through the second half through the um first half of march particularly the second week of march probably Central temperature is currently uh, looking like this, standing at 7.0, very much unchanged where it's been through the past few weeks. That's over 3 degrees above average. That's provisional to the 24th of February. It's going to be exceptionally mild uh, February, of course. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Birmingham today, so the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. A little bit below average at the moment, quite cool, but we'll see upper air temperature starting to lift up as we go over weekend into the beginning of next week. Heading into March, which is this period just here, 
first week to the second week of March. There's a lot of scatter, but we could be starting to see indications of a little bit of a cool down taking place. So there's quite a few GFS ensemble members there, especially from like the 5th to the 9th March period just here, that are, are actually looking quite cold, you know, as we go through that period. Um, we do still have some uh, warmer ensemble members up here, so not a done deal, but we turn things colder through the first uh, week or two of March. But the hints are bad. Precipitation wise going to be a lot of dry weather over the next few days. Sort of quite wet around the turn of the month, though, just there. Uh, and then beyond that, just rather showery. And if it gets colder, those showers might be a little bit wintry. Temperature anomaly is from the 25th of February to the 5th of March are coming out around average. Precipitation anomalies from the 25th of February to 5th of March coming out drier than normal. The latest windflow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows that we've got a ridge of high pressure today. We're between two areas of low pressure, one just there and another one just there. There's an active weather system uh, moving in off the Atlantic as well. Right, let's start going through some chart data then, uh, shall we? So let's have a UK met Euro run. It's looking big night on Monday. Southwest winds and low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing wet and windy weather. Uh, that high pressure re-establishes, though, as we go into the middle of next week. We're under high pressure, mainly driving a lot of fine weather. And then that high pressure sticking around more to our east, so as we get into the second half next week, which pulls the winds into a light sort of east or southeasterly type flow. Uh, Icon looks like that, and um, that's probably a little bit cold as well, that in South VC. Icon looks like this, again, high pressure to our east, low pressure to our west, drawing up those southwesterly winds, and then high pressure builds in through the uh, middle part of next week, settles us down, but probably pulls in a rather chilly east southeasterly flow from off the continent, so it could start to turn a little bit cooler then, actually. Okay, moving on to the GFS midnight run. We're looking like this. High pressure is to our east, low pressure to our west on Monday. And we're drawing up this rather mild southwest wind with wet and windy weather in the north and west. And then high pressure takes over through the middle of next week. That will bring a lot of dry weather uh, with it. Comes some overnight frost, though. Uh, and then we move through towards the end of next week. Another weather system tries to push through from off the Atlantic. However, much more an anti-cyclonic influence. I think we can clearly see that. As we're going up towards day 10, high pressure is well and truly in the ascent. And probably quite mild with that, you know, uh, 7th, of Mar 7th of March, day 10. And I reckon that could lift temperatures into the low teens Celsius, uh, given the strength of the March sunshine. In the right same range, the high pressure sort of relocates more towards our west and northwest. That starts to pull some cooler air in from uh, the north, but not particularly cold on this particular GFS run. We finish up establishing a milder, wetter and windier west or southwesterly flow. The GFS 6Z, again, has high pressure weakening, uh, or high pressure strengthening, I should say, low pressure weakening through the early to middle part of next week. Plenty of high pressure taking over as we move up towards day 10. Uh, get to day 10 itself, we've got high pressure to our south and east, low pressure way to the north and west, and we're bringing in this southwesterly wind, looking rather mild, wet and windy then. Um, again, not much of the cold interlude into the second week of March, but we're sort of on the periphery of it there, around the 13th of March. We are turning things cold across northern Europe, we're kind of on the periphery of it, um, as it had been throughout most of the winter, uh, to be honest. So that's very much back to what we had in January, high pressure in control. Um, and cold air is digging into our north and northeast. We're just on the edges uh, of that cold weather. So, you know, GF has backed off a little bit from the idea that it gets cold in the second week of March to date. GM uh, looks like this. Again, uh, high pressure takes over through the course of next week, bringing a lot of dry weather with it as we move up towards day 10. That's the 7th of March. Perhaps turning just a little bit more unsettled in the far east and northeast, but still this ridge is just to our west and southwest. That brings a lot of dry weather and probably quite spring like weather to the west and south. And then the ECM, uh, once more, is looking rather wet and windy with those southwest winds on Monday. And then high pressure sort of takes over uh, across the country and to our east. We get through the middle of next week, bring quite a bit of dry weather and a rather cooler east to the southeasterly type wind uh, head up towards day 10 uh, probably the coldest of all models today around day 8, 9, 10, the high pressure does get towards Scandinavia and pulls in something of an east to south east wind, actually a bit of a north east there 
on the 6th of March. That is quite cold. Um, and it's still quite cold, you know, to get into 7th of March, day 10 as well. So I think the other all of model output, the ECM, is the coldest today, actually. And we'll probably bring wintry showers in uh, from the east, especially there around uh, 6th of March. That's bringing in like a proper sort of northeasterly type blow, which will bring snow showers, I think, to eastern, southeastern areas. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So, quite a bit of dry weather over the weekend. Into next week, it does turn wetter. Uh, so, the Opal of next week looking quite wet. And then, high pressure takes over for a while. Uh, anyway, however, it is always rain to the north and to the west. And then, we get windy into the east and the north. East. We start to bring these wintry showers in from the east across England and Wales. Uh, with a risk of snow in some places as well. So, uh, so it does get colder around day 9, 10. And definitely chance of some snow in the air, even for more southern counties. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 7th of February. 13 members of the ECM Ensembles with low pressure to the west, high pressure uh, to the east. That's bringing like an east south easterly type blow. Could be rather chilly with that. Another 13 with high pressure just to the north, and around that, we bring in these cold easterly uh, winds. They could bring wintry showers. Nine again with high pressure to our north, and around that high pressure, probably bring in an easterly wind. Um, that includes the control and the operational run, uh, of course. We've got another nine here with high pressure even further north, with low pressure over northern France. That's got even more of an easterly. That could be really quite cold and potentially wintry with that low pressure over northern France, possibly providing some wintry stuff into the south. And then seven uh, with low pressure in off the Atlantic along with those westerly winds. That brings wet and windy conditions. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 12th of March. 16 members of the ECL ensembles with low pressure to our west and northwest. We bring in those mild west to south west winds. 14 with high pressure to the north and around that we bring in those cold easterlies 13 with high pressure sitting just over country so that's going to be mainly dry and probably a little bit spring like with winds in the southwest and then eight with high pressure between scotland and iceland and around that we bring in the wind from an east or northeasterly direction that's going to be cold and dry so you know, a range of options but it definitely could get colder as we go into the second week of march even as early as like next weekend the first weekend of march could get colder it's not impossible CFS v2 finally these are 500 millibar heights bring down to week periods the first week period takes from 25th of Feb to the 3rd of March coming week is dominated by high pressure over country lots of dry weather and gradually starting to bring something a little bit cooler in from the east, uh, perhaps. Week two is going to be the 4th through to the 10th of March, with high pressure just over to the east of the country. And again, we bring in those cold easterly winds, potentially from off the continent. Week three will be the 11th to the 17th of March, with high pressure just to our east. Low pressure is away to the west, and winds probably coming up from like a southerly direction. So that's more spring-like and warmer, and then week four is the 18th to 24th of March. Again, a big area of high pressure just to our east. Low pressure way to the northwest, bringing in an east southeast wind. Probably quite spring type uh, conditions with that. Of course, if high pressure goes any further north, though, we are going to threaten to bring in more of an easterly, northeasterly type blow. So the G CFS might be starting to move a little bit in a colder direction as well. Particularly so, I would have thought, for weeks uh, one and two. Particularly week two here, uh, 4 to 10th of March. That could be uh, bringing quite a cold, easterly type blow. All depends on the position of the ridge. We shall see and time will tell. If you've enjoyed the video, please can smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gazwell. Thank you so much, everyone. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we're done. Right, that's it for today's video. Then tomorrow, same plan. Uh, we'll have the 6M upload and a 10 to 14 day uh, as well. All the additions are on the back burner at the moment. I will be taking a break probably in a couple of weeks' time, two or three weeks' time, I would have thought. You'll have a little break, uh, uh, extended break actually, probably around a month or so. Uh, it'll be the first extended break I've had for a decade. Can you believe that? So it's been a long time coming um, and I am ready for a, a bit of a rest. But not yet. We've still got some more vids to do and uh, and we shall be back tomorrow with 6am upload and a 10 to 14 day as well. So keep shaking back to the channel for more but for this video that's all for now and thanks for watching enjoy the rest of your friday and bye for now